on. Did you turn it on? Good evening. My name is Dana Hensley, and I'm one of the hostesses for tonight's banquet, and I'm with... Jill Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was it, folks. That was my big line for the night. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Go ahead and start eating, which you've obviously done already. Um, and I just want to, by the way, have everybody that was involved in putting this on stand up, please. Lynn, Mary, everybody. This has been an outstanding. Yes, Rue is right. Yeah. I mean, I heard not only great speeches today, I heard some wow speeches. And I'm getting pretty old to think things are wow anymore. And they were just terrific. So my job tonight is to talk to you about engagement, in Kansas politics, which I think is almost ridiculous because I am preaching to the choir. You would not have spent all day today and the money you've spent to be well-educated about all the important issues. So rather than talk about that, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my own political engagement. In 2010, as we know, Governor Brownback was elected, and he brought not only his ideas for the new experiment in with him, but a group of people who were going to support those new ideas. And by 2012, everybody here got what was going on. I think everybody here understood what was going to happen in 2010. But the state was beginning to move by 2012. And I had an opportunity to sit down with Paul Davis at one point, just in a room, the two of us. And I remember saying to him, somebody has to do something about this. And we both almost at the same time said, you run for governor. <laughs> and I knew I didn't want to run for elective office again after 1996, but I was willing to politically engage and help Paul, which I hope I was able to do. And when we started that process, I remember saying to Paul, the most important thing, Paul, is that we move the state of Kansas towards progressive values that have represented us through Democrats and Republicans for the last 40 years. We have to move the system, Paul. I said, but I got to tell you, not only do I think we're going to lose, I think we're going to get shellacked, like by 30 points. By election night, I thought we were going to win. It was the most remarkable movement of political power in the state of Kansas I have ever seen. And much of it had to do with each and every one of you sitting here, because this is one of those groups where I think I know almost everybody. <laughs> you were all involved in some campaign, whether it was a gubernatorial campaign or a house race or just organizational efforts to move the system. You were involved with both Democrats and Republicans, which is what this group is all about. And I thought it was incredible. So when I wake up with kind of a dark film over my eyes, which I sometimes do after the Twitter stuff, and I think, seriously? Seriously, is this what we're talking about in this country? I think about the dark film my dad must have had and my mom living through the Depression. My dad served in World War II. My dad was Jewish and was one of those individuals who got to walk into those early concentration camps. My dad was a court reporter at the Nuremberg trial. He lived through McCarthyism. He lived through all the Nixon difficulties. I think the most splendid thing about America is the power of self-governing and the fact that democracy, I promise you, will come out on the other side of this. Yes. So for all the times that you're worried, and I think we're all doing that, and for all the times we think, I always think to myself, oh my gosh, I started working on politics in Kansas with Tom when I was in my 20s. I'm in my 60s. It's been 40 years, but I got to tell you something, folks, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> so.
On my way out to take a break from one of the terrific speeches, I saw Annie McKay, who I'm a big fan of. I said, Annie, what can I do to help you? She said, don't leave Kansas. I said, I'm not leaving Kansas. I think Sam Brownback's gone, isn't he? I'm not leaving Kansas. So my point to you is it takes a long time to move a, a ship. You know, it takes consistent bursts of energy. If you look at the progression from 2010 to 2012 to 2014 to 2016, it's all a positive progression. I understand what Annie was saying and that I think it's lost a little bit of its oomph, just short term. Believe me, folks, it won't. People are getting into gear. I thank you for all you do. And I got to tell you, frankly, this group has engaged me politically. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jill. They asked me to talk a, a little bit about why women. And again, it's preaching to the choir. Um, but the answer is very, very simple. Um, it is women who are often the ones to change a community, to change a state, to change a country, or to change the world for the better. From Sojourner Truth's extemporaneous speech, Ain't I a Woman, which explained in plain language why women are equal to men, to Florence Nightingale, who in the Crimean War changed the role and perception of nurses forever, to Emily Murphy, the first woman magistrate in the British Empire who joined forces with four other Canadian women and marshaled the people to change a Canadian law that said that women should not be counted as persons. To Rosa Parks, who refused to give up her bus seat in Montgomery, Alabama, which indirectly led to some of the most significant civil rights legislation in American history. To Malala the Pakistani schoolgirl who defied the Taliban to advocate the right to education. What's remarkable about these women is that they aren't necessarily brilliant or gifted. They are ordinary women like you and me who chose to do extraordinary things. It was one woman, a mom, who was sitting around her breakfast table and reflecting on the person who would always be absent from that point on at that breakfast table, who resolved that she was going to try to do everything in her power to make sure that another family didn't have to experience this absence. She started Mothers Against Drunk Driving that has forever changed our perception of drunk driving, raised the legal age of drinking, and most significantly has reduced drunk driving fatalities by 50%. And it's happening at the local level, too. Two women that I know very well who were devastated at their children's inability to learn to read created Fundamental Learning Center, the Wichita nonprofit that is the only accredited dyslexic training site for teachers and parents in Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and Nebraska. So let's not forget that the power that we all have within us get involved in a political race, find candidates who share your values, and go to work for them. The distaste that so many of us, I think, feel about politics today can only change if women go to work. So I would now like to introduce Gina Austin Fresh, who is going to give us a few words in following her comments. Um, please enjoy your dinner. Jill and I will be back for the candidate forum. I actually have a poem that I'm going to read for you. It's in your program, but you're eating, so I'll read it to you. <laughs> it's called Merger Poem by Judy Chicago. And then, all that has divided us will merge. And then compassion will be wedded to power, and softness will come to a world that is harsh and unkind. And then both men and women will be gentle. And then both women and men will be strong. And then no person will be subject to another's will. And then all will be rich and free and varied. And then greed of some will give way to the needs of many. 
and then all will share equally in the earth's abundance. And then all will care for the sick and the weak and the old. And then all will nourish the young. And then all will cherish life's creatures. And then all will live in harmony with each other and the earth. And then everywhere will be called Eden once again. Thank you. Enjoy your dinner.